grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you please bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and again, we thank you for your word. We pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive that word today, that you would guide me and help me to preach faithfully, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So the passage that we're going to focus the most on is our passage here from Deuteronomy. I'm going to read it again um, with some of the the verses that we're missing here. Um, This is what it says. It says, And now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the rules that I'm teaching you, and do them, that you may live, and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? Whenever we call upon him, And what great nation is there that the statutes and rules so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, back in the 1980s, there was a movie called Rocket Man that was a goofy comedy movie about an engineer and some astronauts that go to Mars. And it's kind of, the characters are kind of like the, the caricatures of, of like a high school comedy drama type thing, right? So you had, the astronauts were kind of the cool athletic guys, and then the engineer was kind of the, the nerdy, annoying, but likable kid, right? But these are all adults, of course. And so they kind of play that up, and there's this animosity from the astronauts towards this engineer. Like, he's just not as cool as they are. And there's a scene in the movie where the astronauts come in, they're preparing for this mission, and they come into his office, to the engineer's office, and they say, you got to fix your, your simulation software for the, the or uh, what is it, the, the lander going down to the planet. Because every time we enter the calculations in, the whole thing just fails and the thing crashes. So you got to fix your problem. And the engineer's like, I mean, I I think I did it right. I don't know. And so they said, no, no, no. You you did it wrong. Every time we do it, it it fails. And so he said, well, let me take a look at this. And he he gets on the computer. He says, oh, well, well, I see the problem. You um, aren't doing your calculations right. And you don't understand how, how gravity works. And the, the astronaut's like, well, that can't be. I would not make a mistake like that. I am an astronaut. And he says, well, okay, well, let me show you. And so he, he enters the things. He says, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in the same calculations as you, except I'm going to use what we like to call the right way, and we'll see if it works. And he does it, and it works fine. And then the astronaut's kind of upset, so he pushes him to the side. He's like, I'll show you, and, da, 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 and he enters it in, and then the whole thing crashes again, right? He doesn't know what he's doing. And it's, it's kind of an amusing scene. And my favorite line of that thing, though, is where the guy's like, okay, so we're going to try this, and I'm going to use what I like to call the right way. Right? I've used that with, with my kids sometimes. <laughs> All right, we're going to try this, except we're going to do this in the right way. You know? And... and It was something that amused me, but it also reminded me, like that popped into my mind as I was thinking about what we're talking about here today, because I think sometimes we do that, right? We're like the the, the astronauts that kind of push the engineer aside, and we're like, no, I I get this. I know what I'm doing to God. Like, God created all of this. God created you and me, and he created the whole universe. He knows how it all works. He knows the calculations, right? right? Better than we do. He understands how it works. And yet, so often we're like, you know what, God, I've got this. I know a better way. I can do this in a better way. 
Now, our passage from Deuteronomy, God is telling Israel, right, I'm, I'm giving you these commands, I'm giving you these statutes, I'm telling you all these things for your own good, right? It's going to make you wise and understanding. It's going to help you. It's going to be a blessing to you. And so he tells them, you know, don't add to it and don't take away from it. Right? And the same, the same message is here for us today. God has given us his word, and it's for our own good. It's so we can learn right from wrong. We can learn how things work. We can understand who God is, who we are. And so we can know the promises and the salvation that God has for us. It's for our own good, and we're not supposed to take away from it or add to it. Just hear it, receive it, and believe it do it, right? And so how do we do this? How do we add or take away from what God says? Well, sometimes we add to it by giving new requirements, giving new things like, well, you know, we see this a lot with the, the Pharisees and Jesus. They would be saying, you have to do this and you have to do that. And Jesus is like, I don't remember telling you guys to do that. And in fact, there's a, a moment like that just before our gospel reading, because the, the Pharisees come, and they're all at this house, and the disciples go in to eat, and the Pharisees have this tradition of doing a ceremonial hand washing. Now, kids, wash your hands before you eat. That's a good thing to do. But it wasn't a biblical requirement, right? And they were like, look at those disciples. They didn't wash their hands. And Jesus is like, okay, but that's not, that's not in the Bible, right? That wasn't one of the commands. They had added that to it, right? And then they were requiring it like it was a thing. And sometimes we even do this today. It's like, okay, to be saved, you have to believe in Jesus. And you have to, what? Do these things. Go to church. Not do these sins. Whatever it might be. And we start adding on these different requirements that aren't there. We're not supposed to do that. But sometimes we take away, right? We ignore parts of what God said, or maybe ignore the whole thing. And we say things like, oh, you know what? Lying, yeah, it's wrong, but in this case, you know, it was just going to help the relationship. So it's okay. Or it's okay if I disobey my parents as long as they don't find out and nobody gets hurt. And we start making little exceptions, little excuses, and we take away from what God has told us. And in fact, that was what follows right after the whole uh, hand-washing thing in that gospel reading is that then Jesus calls out the Pharisees because they had this practice. This was a thing they invented once again where they would dedicate money to God, which sounds like a really good thing, right? Really good, pious type of thing. But they would do it so that they wouldn't have to then use their money to care for their family. So I'm assuming not like their immediate family, but like, you know, mom and dad are getting a little old. Sorry, my money's already been committed to God. I can't use that for you. You know, or the uncle who's not doing a job or whatever. They're, they were using it as an excuse, and Jesus calls them out. He says, here you do this man-made tradition while ignoring the actual command of God to care for your family. Right? They were taking away. And we do that today sometimes too. Sometimes we just change what God said. You know? God gave us marriage. It's a good thing to be married. Then you have, like, we can look in the Old Testament. You have Solomon, right? Super wise Solomon. And yet, he's like, hey, if marriage is good, how about I have hundreds of wives? Even though God said, no, it's supposed to be one. Today, we've completely redefined marriage to suit what we think is better. Right? And these things affect us. They affect us spiritually. They affect us even just practically in life. I mean, spiritually, when we're doing, we're going against what God says, then that's going to affect our relationship with God. But even practically, we can see that these things cause problems. Now, let's look back at, that, at the marriage concept. One of the things that we started, started to do in our society today is figure, well, I mean, probably the best thing to do would be to, to live together before you get married, kind of test things out a bit, right? Which is not what we're supposed to do, but it is something that we do in our society, thinking that we're really smart and we're going we're gonna to figure all this stuff out, and yet we can even look at our own research and see that leads to a higher rate of divorce. Right? We're not so smart. 
And in fact, we can, we can understand this if we understand how people work, that if you get into a relationship where you have that commitment, right, there's a safety, there's a peace, and there's a, there's a, we're going to work through everything, right, because we're staying together. Versus if you don't have that, now it's a test, and there's anxiety, and there's the ability to just walk away whenever you want. Right, so it makes sense if you think about it, but a lot of times we don't. But we shouldn't be surprised when we come up with bad ideas and we think that we're good, right? What is it that Jesus said in our gospel reading? He said, the things that are outside of you, right, those aren't the things that defile you. The things that defile you come from within you. Right? They're the things that come from within you because we have a corrupt heart. You know, we have a sinful heart. We have a flawed mind, a flawed reasoning, and we don't understand all things. And so the things that come out of us are the things that can be problematic. And so when we start saying, you know what, I think I know better than you, God, those things that are coming out are corrupt. They're flawed. Whereas God, who is the creator of all things, right, he gives us what is good and perfect and right. It would be kind of like if we bought a car and we said, you know what, I think I know how this thing works and how to maintain it better than the engineers. I'm going to throw away the manual and I'll just do whatever I feel like doing. And gas gets a little expensive. You're like, you know what, maybe we'll just put a little water in there this time because gas is too expensive, right? Destroys your engine, right? <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Not good. So, you know, if you add something like water, that's going to be a problem. If you take things away, right, that's also a problem. As I learned my first year in college, if you don't have enough oil, you have a, a cracked engine block and you ride your bike a lot. That's what I did. Right? We take away, we think we know better. We, we can kind of understand that when it comes to cars. And yet those are human beings who make mistakes, those engineers who made the car. God is not. And he created all of this. All of us, he knows how we work. He knows how everything works. And he knows what is right and wrong. And he has given us his word to guide us. So we're to listen to what God says in his word. To cherish it. To want it. To, to take it in like food every day. To trust it over man's word in all things. To follow, because following God's commands it's good for us, right? As he said, it makes us wise. It makes us wise, both in this life and for salvation, right? It teaches us right from wrong. It teaches us righteousness, but it also shows us the salvation of God so that we're not trying to come up with that ourselves. It's good for us. And in fact, it's good for the world. Not only does it lead to lots of benefits within the world, but people can see that wisdom as we follow what God says. And some will see it and say, I want that. You know, that passage in Deuteronomy, God's saying, you know, the, the nations are going to look at you and some of them are going to be like, man, these guys are wise and they're righteous and they have a close relationship with God. I want that. They were supposed to be a light to the Gentiles. They didn't do it very well. Just like we don't do it very well. But we have his word to follow. And I just want to reiterate this. We've said this a couple of times with the kids now. But God's word is not just limited to the commands. It includes his promises. Right? His commands are good and we want to follow them. But his promises are true and good like the commands are. Right? God's promise to always be with us, to forgive us, to give us eternal life when we believe in him, to love us, to care for us. These promises are true. Sometimes people try to add to these as well. Right? And they say, yeah, God's going to give you all these things. Plus, if you trust enough with him, you'll never suffer and you'll have as much money as you want. He's like, no, nah, God didn't say that. So we don't want to add to it. We also don't want to take away from it. Sometimes people will do that. Yeah, believing in Jesus is enough, but what you did, oh. And those are not true. Right? When we add or we take away, they become untrue. 
Trust God's promises. Trust Him. Above what the world says, in spite of what the world says, against what the world says. Trust His promises. They are always true. They are always good. They find their yes in Jesus Christ, who was the fulfillment of a promise of God to send a Savior for our our good, for our forgiveness and eternal life. So when we're talking about man's word versus God's word, don't trust man's word. Don't trust his wisdom. Don't trust his ways. Trust God's way and God's wisdom, and God's promise. Study it. Pass it on to your kids, and to your kids' kids, and to their kids, like the most precious thing that's ever existed, because it is. Amen.